Have a look at the phone in my hand. This small piece of technology is many times more powerful than the computers used to put the first astronauts on the moon. Some scientists predict that by the mid-2020s, the most powerful computer on the planet will exceed the capacity of a human brain. By the mid-2040s, the most powerful computer will exceed the processing power of all human minds put together. Think about what that means for humanity. But let's get back to my phone. Because travel inherently involves being mobile, advances in mobile devices offer enormous potential to enhance travel experiences. But how can travel suppliers and travellers harness the potential of these devices? We can use a model called Tiles to explain how your phone might use contextual data to create a seamless travel experience. The T in the Tiles model stands for temporal data. Your phone knows the current season, time and day of the year. If you are connected to the internet, it can access information about current events, your diary and your travel itinerary. The I stands for identity. The apps you install on your phone tell the device about your interests and demographics and possibly also your language, food and activity preferences. The L stands for location. Your phone knows your current location and the location of nearby attractions that might interest you. It also knows what direction you're facing and your travel speed. The E stands for environment. The various sensors and signals attached to your phone provide information about the weather, traffic congestion and waiting times. The S stands for social. Most people have social media apps on their phone. This means your phone knows about your family and friendship group, your travel companions, group interests, nearby family and friends and social media activity. If we combine all of these contextual data sources with the power of artificial intelligence, the opportunities for tourism become very apparent. Let's look at a few examples. The next hotel in Brisbane has been designed around the idea that guests can use the hotel's smartphone app for a range of tasks and requests. The next app we have in all the rooms on devices and people can also download it onto their personal device. What it does is it allows people to order all their in-room dining uses it as a universal control as well. So they order their in-room dining as I said control all their lights, the TV, the aircon. They can check their bill, they can self-check out on it, and they can order their cars or new toiletries, whatever they need. It's really handy as well for international guests because they can actually take it outside the room and use it as a Wi-Fi hotspot, which is very popular. And they can also take it outside and control their air conditioning. So if you're out in the Queensland heat in summer, they can set the air conditioning so when they get back to the room, it's nice and cold for them. Mobile devices are also being used at attractions. Australia Zoo, home of the famous crocodile hunter Steve Irwin, has also gone high-tech. The Australia Zoo smartphone app provides facts about the exhibits and animals, as well as a day planner and show reminders. It also offers a virtual tour of the zoo, and if you get lost, the app can help you navigate around. A few things that we have done in the last couple of years is we've introduced an app um, so that guests coming to Australia Zoo before they arrive can download it to their phones or they can do it when they're here because we do provide free Wi-Fi. Um, and then while they're travelling around the zoo and, and seeing all the different animals, um, a little icon will actually pop up on their phone and tell you about that animal. The next stages of that app is what I'm really excited about. It's going to be translated into about seven different languages um, and with audio as well. So that we can connect with all the international families and guests that come to the zoo and want to learn more about conservation. So that was a, one exciting thing. We've done some work here at the University of Queensland to look at smartphone use in another location, museums. Dr Karen Hughes is here to explain. Museums, art galleries and visitor attractions often use digital technology such as audio-visual displays, interactive exhibits and holograms to enhance the visitor experience. But until very recently, there's been a surprising resistance to letting visitors use their own technology in these spaces. Why? Well, purists say that places like museums are for learning and that phones and access to social media will detract from the learning experience. But is this actually the case? Our studies in museum settings suggest not. At least, not for the most elusive of museum visitors, young adults. 
In a series of experiments, we found that if young adults were prevented from bringing their own mobile devices, such as smartphones and tablets, into the museum, they spent less time at exhibits. They were more attracted to exhibits with audiovisual elements, but less likely to read text. Contrary to popular belief, visitors who were separated from their smartphones were less likely to actively process information and report learning than those who are allowed to use their mobile devices in exhibition areas. So, it seems that if you take away their smartphones, young adults pay less attention to exhibitions. They only browse. For international visitors and recent migrants, smartphones provide a number of additional functions. They are used to translate signs, to look up information in their native language, to search for photos of similar exhibits in their home museums, and to compare their current experiences with previous experiences. This suggests that without mobile communication devices, international visitors and migrants are likely to struggle to make sense of exhibits and experiences. We argue that the potential benefits of mobile devices in museums far outweigh their distractive qualities. By embracing and permitting the use of emerging technologies, museums can send the message that they are willing to open their doors to one and all. So how can tourism suppliers take full advantage of mobile devices? Mobile devices can support 10 important travel functions. Let's look at these through a story. Imagine Kate is going on a business trip to Shanghai. Her phone is a useful communication tool, as well as an invaluable source of information about flights, accommodation and activities at the destination. It contextualises this information. For example, it knows it's raining at the destination, so tells Kate to take an umbrella. As Kate drives towards the airport, her phone notices traffic congestion up ahead and calculates that she won't get to the airport in time. The AI finds and books alternative flights to fit in with Kate's personalised itinerary and preferences. Kate finally arrives at the airport, her app senses where she is and issues a digital boarding pass. While Kate is waiting for her flight, she's able to socialise with people in her network using social media apps. Her phone provides continual updates about departure times and gate changes and notifies her when it's time to board. As she heads through the boarding gate, the phone wirelessly communicates with the airline's reservation system so the airline knows she's boarded. The onboard Wi-Fi allows Kate to reorganise and manage her itinerary to book a car from the airport to her hotel. Her phone tracks her driverless car so she knows precisely when it will arrive. She purchases a snack using the digital wallet on her phone while she waits. As she walks through the hotel entrance, the reservation system automatically checks her in and sends her room number to her phone. She uses the phone's augmented reality tools to get directions to her business meeting. She uses her phone to translate the Chinese signs around her. After a long day of negotiations, Kate decides to see a bit of Shanghai, but rather than booking a tour, she uses a game on her phone to help her discover and explore key sites. One year later, Kate receives a notification on social media that causes her to reflect on the great time she had in Shanghai. Maybe it's time to book another trip. As technology continues to advance and visitors become more reliant on mobile devices, it's critical that tourism suppliers recognise and harness the power that each person holds in their hand. 